Hello, welcome to Instrument School. Um, just wanted to start making a few videos on instrument ratings you know, for our students to, to do some study or some uh, pre learning before they join us for the instrument rating, just to get their head around a couple of the basics of IFR. So, today I thought we'd go through some NAV aid information. So, some of the, uh, the types of NAV aids and the different ways that that information is displayed to us on the indicators. Uh, then we'll back out to the aircraft and we'll have a look at some of the real world examples that we have in our fleet. So when it comes to using a nav aid for IFR, we have three basic requirements. So we need a source, and that's the nav aid itself. So that could be an NDB, a VOR, the GPS, uh, it, could be, uh, it could be the ILS, and uh, that's the, the information that we're receiving. So sometimes that's called the receiver. Um, we also need to have an indicator that's actually displaying the information to us in a, uh, in a way that we can interpret it so that we know that what the nav is actually telling us. We also then need a means of monitoring the integrity of the aid. And what that is, is a way of telling us if the aid has actually fallen over or uh, ceased working for whatever reason, we need to know about it so that we're not uh, trying to follow information that's incorrect. So. The first one we'll go and have a look at uh, the uh, couple of different types of sources or the nav aids themselves. So here in our Dutch we can see a couple of the different sources we have of our nav information. The, uh, the first one being the GPS, which is a technical service order or TSO GPS. And uh, the GPS is obviously going to give us our, our position. And we can use that for an instrument approach, so for an RNP approach. The GPS unit also includes the VHF nav as well. So if we select that one, we have our VOR or our ILS frequencies there, which is another source of our, uh, of our information for our navigation. Uh, we also have, as a standalone down here, we have our separate VHF nav, which is the uh, VOR or the ILS. And uh, that one goes across to our nav indicator too, which we'll talk about the indicators in a moment. We also have down here the ADF, which uh, finds ourselves an NDB or a non-directional beacon. And that's another source of our information. So as you can see, we have options of, uh, of sources of our information. And uh, we'll come back to that shortly because we do need to make sure that we've selected the correct source so that we're uh, following the, uh, the nav aid that we think we're actually following. As far as our indicators, we have a couple of different options. I've picked the Dutch S because it's sort of got uh, a little bit of everything, which gives us a, a few of the, uh, the common options. So we have our HSI here, or our horizontal situation indicator. Uh, this one's an electric one, so it's an EHSI, but functions as far as for us the pilot it functions the, uh, the same way as an analog one we also have a standalone cdi here which stands for course deviation indicator at the moment it's telling us that it's not got any information that's why it's got a nav flag up there so we've uh, we've got no valid data to it whereas you'll see the electronic hsi when it's got no valid data it just doesn't give us a cdi at all we also have the ADF indicator here, which is taking the information from the ADF unit we just had a look at over here. Here we have the EHSI with a couple of options. So it can be taking the information either from the GPS or from NAV1, which is our ILS frequency there. So that's where we can get a little bit confused because the same indicator can display information from a variety of sources. So that's where we can select, if we get a default nav there, we can select via the CDI button, which remember we have a course deviation indicator. So it's actually using the GPS to communicate with the EHSI and it can change between whether we've got VOR, so VHF localizer, or GPS and whichever we've selected here will come across onto our EHSI here. So I've just selected localizer and suddenly we've got a CDI there. Now what we can do if we go back to GPS mode, let's put in an actual flight plan 
So let's pretend we're going from Cessnock to Maitland. And we now have GPS data to the HSI, which is now giving us a course deviation indicator there based on the GPS information. So that we know that our information being displayed from our GPS unit to our EHSI is correct, when we first start it up, and I'll just turn the avionics masters on there, it'll come up with a few initialization type screens. And we can, sorry, there goes my sunshade. That, there we go, so we can see a bit easier. And you'll see there, the first thing we need to do is check that we have a current database there. So the navigation database is the one that, uh, the one that's the legal one required. The other ones there have just expired. They're the safe taxi ones and the uh, obstacles, so the, the high tension lines, which are uh, optional ones, which are nice to have. So we should update those shortly. But then once we've uh, accepted that, we can continue. And it actually gives us what we should be seeing on the EHSI. So as far as it tells us that we should have the lateral CDI, half left, which we do if we're looking at it from the direction it's going. And we also should have our vertical CDI half up, which we can see there is half up. Now we're lucky in the Duchess here, we have a second one that uh, displays on the AH itself, or the, the mini PFD, primary flight, flight display, and it's also showing half left and half up. It also wants us to make sure that we don't have any nav flags and it gives us a heading to check, or a, sorry, a track to check that it's displaying so that we know that the information it thinks it's telling us is actually what we're seeing so that we can confirm that it's wired in properly or there's no faults with the unit or something like that. And uh, that's part of the, uh, the startup for our integrity monitoring so that we've, we've got some integrity in the system. So as far as other forms of integrity monitoring, we have our VOR indicator here, the standalone CDI, and it's showing us a nav flag at the moment. And that's because, well, A, I've got the avionics now turned off, and B, if I did have them turned on, I didn't have a frequency tuned up for it. So that's showing us that we can't use that. So that is our form of integrity monitoring for the VOR, is do we have a nav flag or not? If the nav flag pops up, well then it's not, uh, not receiving any accurate information, so we can't track via it. The GPS, which again, I've turned off because I'm trying to save some battery. So the GPS, it has a warning that will come up if it's lost RAIM. And RAIM is Receiver Autonomous Integrity Monitoring, which we'll talk about in another one. But basically that's an indication that we've got an issue with the, uh, the ability of the GPS to accurately display a position. So if that came up on the unit, then we've got an issue with our integrity of the system and we wouldn't be able to use it for navigation or for an instrument approach. For the NDB, all we've got, or the ADF indicator here, all we've got is an arrow that just goes round and round and points towards the station. So very, very, uh, very, very basic technology, but um, it, it, in my opinion, it's one of, the, uh, one of the more logical type of instruments because it's always pointing towards the station. So if ever you get a little bit confused, just remember, it's always pointing at the station. And if you remember that, then, uh, then you can't go too far wrong. But it doesn't have anything that tells us if the signal being displayed to it is incorrect. So that's where we actually have to have the ident running for the whole approach if we're using the NDB. And that's the beep, 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 or, or words to that effect. And we need to leave that running the whole time so that if the beeping stops, we know we've got an issue with the integrity of the aid. So a few different options or a few different methods of uh, maintaining the integrity or, or knowing the integrity of our nav aids and, uh, and all, uh, all got to be used during an instrument approach so that we know that we are following an accurate nav source. With the glass cockpit stuff, like here in the Chieftain with the G600, it's all very much the same. Uh, it's just we have a few more options that we can select on our PFD here, 
uh, from our from our instruments that we were in that we're taking it from. So we've got the two GPSs there. We can continue through that one. Oh look, let's be Ollie. And uh, we can go full screen there. So here, we've got once again our CDI, but see the CDI source, it's given us two options. We've got our two GPSs or our two localizers, um, which is of course coming from either one or two, both of which can be a, a nav, so a VOR and ILS. And the same as that one can, uh, or they can give the GPS function. So very much the same, it's, uh, it's just that it's a little bit more integrated and we have a few more options to display on the one screen. So just to refresh, we need to get ourselves a source, which is the NAVAID itself, and we then need an indicator to be able to uh, show the information that we can fly then accurately for our instrument approach. And we also need our uh, method of integrity monitoring. Thanks for watching. I hope that that was a bit of a, an insight into the instruments or the NAVAID requirements we have to uh, be able to operate an aircraft IFR. In the next video, we'll go through how to actually set those instruments up to be able to use for on-route navigation and then uh, also for the instrument approaches themselves. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.